So this is the manual bonding system made by Advanced Integrated Technologies, and I'm going to give a basic uh, overview of how it works. It is pneumatic controlled. This is where the force, downforce, comes from. So with a foot pedal, when you press it, it goes to full stroke or to whatever stops it, which this would be your product and tooling mounted here. Let's take a look at the controls up here. When you take the uh, e-stop out, it lets power to the unit. This is the temperature controller, and it starts blinking. The reason it's blinking is because it doesn't have a thermocouple feedback. So I'm going to show you where these plug in at here. I get it right. The thermocouple plugs in right here. You can see this stopped blinking and the output come on. I'm going to show you this is where the heat unit is plugged in. So anytime you change a thermode, you'll have to, of course, plug in the thermocouple and the heat. So right here, I'm going to flip the heat on. And what that does is just allows power to flow to the heat cartridge. And uh, let's go up here and take a look at this. So right now this down arrow button means that it has not reached the set point. The little round one says it has, and the up arrow means that it's overshot the temperature, uh, which don't be concerned about that. It only overshoots by about five or six degrees centigrade. So right now it's cooling back to the set point. You can see right here this is all uh, set by the dial. So right now it's set to 60 degrees and as this thing drops below temperature the output comes on and it just keeps it hovering right around the set point so if I increase the temperature to 80 for example you can see the output comes on again it's going to warm it up to 80 Celsius right there it reached it right there it overshot by just a little bit and then it'll settle back down and so that's how it keeps it at temperature uh, so that's pretty much it. When you're running a bonding cycle and you want it to cool off uh, before retracting the head, just flip it off if you need it to. And uh, that this, this, this unit here stays on when you do that, but it just cuts power to the output so it, it won't heat up anymore and it'll cool off. These thermodes take uh, about 20 or 30 seconds to cool down in ambient air. So there's a pressure uh, setting right here. This is the gauge and, and this is how you set it. It's only active on the downstroke though. So with the downstroke, you can see it'll read the pressure and you can set it to whatever PSI you need, which translates into the force you're getting through the cylinder. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the controls. The e-stop stops everything and also kills the power. That's your way to turn it off. Let's take a look at the, at the bonding head here. As I mentioned before, it is uh, controlled by pneumatic cylinder. These are flow controls. Uh, they take a little tool that has to slide in there to, to adjust the flow uh, to, so that your operator can't just turn them up and down anytime they want once you get it set. Uh, it takes a special tool to change these. This is where the thermode mounts. And the thermode is stainless steel and it's bolted in this way with bolts into this block right here. So when you need to change it, uh, you'll take those bolts out, the thermode comes off, the strain relief right here is attached to the thermode, so it comes with it, it's all part of the same unit. And the power wires and the thermocouple wire are run through the strain relief. One thing that's important to note is that this thermocouple wire needs to stay away from the hot bar. So the only point it should touch it is right where the weld is. But in this area, you can see I've got it uh, kind of looping out and away from the hot bar, and that's so we don't burn the insulation off that thermocouple wire. This thermode is built so that it can be leveled. So this block right here is floating on a steel ball right in the center of it. There's two screws here and two screws right back here, which you may not see in the video, but that's all right. You, you can understand what I'm talking about. These screws are what mount this on here, and because there's a ball in the center, if you loosen one side and tighten the other, then you can tilt this thermode like this and front to back. So when you go to set it up and you have your tooling in here, uh, whatever you need to, to get the thermode set coplanar with, you use a pressure sensitive film, uh, which looks like this right here. You slide it in there, bring the head down and squeeze it against your tooling and it makes an impression. And so 
you can see right here on this, this is a good example right here. This impression, see how it's darker on this bottom edge than it is toward the top? Wherever it's darker is where it is seeing more pressure. So if I were to make an impression with this and it was dark on the front edge, that would mean my thermo was tilted more like this where the front edge is hitting first. And so I would need to adjust these screws to bring it back to level. And so that's how you, you set the hot bar to be flat and coplanar with your tooling or with your product. Just want to go over a couple other small items here. Um, let me turn this around so we can see what's on the back. We you have your air inputs, the down input and the up input. And you have your outputs which come right over and go directly to the cylinder. It says right here 110 volt AC power standard uh, connection like you see on computers. When uh, the machine is turned on there's a fan, a cooling fan in here that cools the electronics inside and there is a little uh, foam filter in here and these are just thumb screws that come off. So you can do this and take the filter out, clean it, replace it if you need to. Anything that's done inside this cabinet, any maintenance or any changing of filters needs to be done with the machine unplugged because it is 110 volt power in here and there are some bare contacts that you could accidentally touch and then get electrocuted. Flip it around to the other side. This is where the air input is and this regulator needs to always be set to 80 PSI. It doesn't need to be higher and it doesn't need to be lower. It operates at 80 PSI and then the regulator on the front of the machine right here uh, this max maxes out at 60 PSI. That's pretty much it. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Get your tooling set straight, get your temperature set, and then it's just hold the pedal down for the cycle. And whenever your bond time is finished, you, you time it manually, and you let up on the foot pedal, and then it'll retract.